Another solid. Look at the look at the way he just cleared that. In for the touchdown. That touchdown is made sponsored by Shane Lemieux. That's a touchdown sponsored by Shane Lemieux right there. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Anthony. Welcome to another edition of BNA Sports Talking today. I want to do a Shane Lemieux film analysis. I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys have seen Shane Lemieux before, but you know, it's been a while since the draft. Let's get a refresher of what Shane Lemieux can bring to our team. More specifically, I'm going to be watching two games. So first thing I want to notice is that he's next to Penny Sewell, the number one pretty much ranked offensive tackle next year. Uh, what uh, Shane Lemieux does really well is getting to that second level and blocking. He has enough speed. Sometimes it seems like he's like a puppy dog in a way. It's just, I don't know, he, he sometimes doesn't pay attention in a lot of ways. Sometimes he gets turned around and spun around. I have some plays that I want to highlight to you guys where you can really see, you know, Shane Lemieux not really, uh, you know, doing the be the best things, but he keeps a strong base. He doesn't really allow guys to run around him. I think that you know, against the elite defenders, he may let some guys fool him with like some swim moves and things like that, but everyone gets fooled by those things. Uh, I think he has a solid first punch. He's not going to move uh, defensive tackles that far, I don't really think, but he's good with angles and edges. That's something that he's really good with. He understands, you know, angles. Of the, if there's a guy that's going to be running behind him, okay, let's, you know, let's open up that hole for him. And there are a couple of times where I really see him do this, especially in the Auburn game where they're playing one of the best defensive tackle classes in the league. He's very physical, sometimes a little bit too much. I saw some Makai Becton-like plays out of him. I think in the or Auburn game, he was just excited to play. It was the first game of the year. He didn't miss a snap in the four years that he played for um, an Oregon, so that's very important for him. But yeah, let's just start highlighting some plays that I see from him. So first and goal right here, they're, uh, it's it's in the early game. Uh, Justin Herbert's calling a little bit of an audible or, you know, switching up the play a little bit. So this is very important, a very important test for him. He doesn't get a lot of push. Uh, doesn't hold on to the, you know, defensive tackle that long, but he does his job boxing him out. This next play we see, you know, they show a similar formation, but he's in space, something that they did a lot. Again, doesn't really get a bunch of push on, you know, on that defensive tackle, but he was doing his job. He just needs a little bit of a higher motor at some. See right, that that last play right there. He doesn't really just he just doesn't do a lot right there. He kind of like gives up on his block. Like oh, uh, the play is over. Kind of. He gets a little bit lazy. I think that. And uh, that's something that I see him do a lot. That one hand thing that's very effective, keeping that inside leverage. Um, that you know just keeps defensive ends and defensive tackles at bay. Here goes Shane Lemieux getting his hands on the inside. He falls here. Didn't really fall a lot, but he gets some lower inside leverage. Makes a defensive tackle fall. If you get a defensive tackle, both fall. That's a good sign. But if you fall and he doesn't, that's a bad sign. Uh, this next one kind of lets the pass rush get a little bit further uh, than I would like. But, you know, just just still solid. and no, Nothing really to you know, highlight and point out there. Uh, this one, working on to that second level, really drives that hole and makes... You know, that running back get into the, inside the five-yard line and sets up the score for the next play. He doesn't really do a great job here. Kind of lets the defender go a little bit past him, but I'm assuming he did that on purpose because he knew the running back was running behind him. But um, still not, a, uh, not the best rep in the world. See there, I didn't really love his effort there. Everyone's, you know, it seems like they're fighting and stuff. He seems like the guy who's just like stood up at the end of war. This one, I like his effort much more. And you can see it almost results in a touchdown. He didn't really have a bunch of effect. You have Justin Herbert and a lot of motions and a lot of people. As far as fit on this team, we are Air Coriel. We're not like a West Coast style like in Auburn right there. Um, I don't really love the love love the fit, but I think he can be solid for us. Just fighting there, recovering and things like that. Holds him for enough uh, enough time. And let's take a look at that. A touchdown from Oregon. You know, you can't expect offensive linemen to hold for like 50 seconds. Like they don't know what's going on. Yeah, I guess you want to continue your block just in case, but, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world. Here, he's trying to find work in space. Let's see how he does. See how he 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 thought the play was over, but he ended up being in the right position as well. I think in the NFL, you have to pay more attention to detail in that aspect. Like, you know, block the guys. Even if you don't think the running back is behind you, still block him. Still put some solid, you know, a film on tape. He doesn't really push a lot of people around, but he holds the guy just long enough for, uh, you know, a play to be made by the running back. But unfortunately, this gets taken back, I think, to the one or two yard line. Um, yeah, so he's definitely not chasing that guy down. I don't blame him for that. This one, he does get a little bit bullied, but he does solid work. Number 94, 
Uh, I don't think that guy got drafted. I don't believe that's Marlon Davidson. So it's not the best Auburn defensive tackle. He really go a lot against Trent Brown. This one he does, but needs help from that running back with an extra punch. Derek Brown probably would have beaten him on that rep, which is giving me kind of reservations about a Shane Lemieux. This one gets kind of bullied, but does give a decent recover against, uh, I'm not sure if that's Marlon Davidson or whatever, but that's one of their better defensive tackles right there. This next rep, I, I believe he does an even better job of not getting pushed around by this guy, keeping that leverage inside, keeping his hands you know, good, even though he's not really positioned with his feet that well. A solid pass rep, keeps his hands inside, um, good against you know an Auburn defensive tackle. This one, I see that inside hand working out a little bit. Um, solid rep, controls the defensive tackle, even though he didn't really have that base leverage. Looking for work there, just a solid job, you know, just being patient, not falling at defensive tackle and waiting for that counter. And he ended up, you know, avoiding pressure for Justin Herbert. This one wasn't really his fault. He did get caught up a little bit with blocking some other guys, maybe a double team, but you definitely like to see a little bit of a better pass rush recognition. Gets to that second level real well. Good first punch, but doesn't, is not able to deliver that second punch and the defensive back ends up taking care of their running back. Doing work against 94, but 94 ends up winning the hands battle there. Um, you know, the Shane Lemieux needs to do a little bit of a better job. That one, that was a rep against Trent Brown. Does very solid against Trent Brown. Doesn't, you know, doesn't allow his physicality to take over him. This next one, working with number 58, Penny Sewell, who kind of just like, <laughs> what do you call it, teabags him? That, that was a funny play right there. I don't think the Giants are going to throw that many screens, but I trust Shane Lemieux out in space. More than I do a Will Hernandez. This one, just physicality against Derek Brown right there. And uh, Derek, he, Derek Brown wasn't able to make the tackle. You know, Shane Lemieux kind of distracted him. He won that hand battle right there. So he was up for the challenge. Gets that initial punch with that right hand, the number 91, as revenge for that play. And that was a, a solid pass rep. Justin Herbert is down. Doesn't get a lot of push there. I mean, I don't know. It's kind of on and off. And then that allows Auburn to get the defensive stop. I think a fourth down. Solid push by Shane the Mew there. That's what you like to see. That's what you like to see. The game is going to its end. You know, you, you got to fight in those trenches. Gets beaten by 94 in this play. But I love the effort that I'm seeing right here. It's a third down. How do you respond to this? Um, you know, 94, your guy just made a tackle on the running back and just got a big stop third and 14 how do you respond this is where you make your money right here again uh, there's nobody to block but uh, overall Shane the does solid in this game I believe that there's one or two more plays that are on tape actually no there's not let's move on to the next film okay so for this tape we are throwing it back to 2018 remember that that was like five years ago but they are playing Stanford and let's see how Shane the does in his junior season in college no, I do not want to play Raid Shadow Legends. Sorry. And a solid rep. I'm going to play this one again. Take a look at Shane the Mew. Sealing that edge. Helping seal that edge off for number 20 to run in easily for the touchdown. I believe he was untouched in that one. This one, again, clearing some guys. I think the you know the running back chose the wrong hole. But you know he's clearing guys guys for the run game right there. He's working with Penny Sewell. And then he realizes, you know what, he's not going. So he tries to block somebody else. I trust my guy in Penny Sewell. So I'm going to do my own thing here. This one doesn't really have anybody to block, so it chooses to punch number 57 again. Uh, shows that he loves the sport of football again. I'd love to see him finish on more plays. This one sealing the block, even though it wasn't really involved in the play. Uh, I still love to see it by, uh, you know, Shane Lemieux. Take a look at him, this play right here. Push some guys, gets to that second level. Just trying to, you know, block as many people as possible. When, when there's five guys there, there's not much you can do. This one, you know it's a pass rep. Gets number 10 out of there. And allows Justin Herbert to at least attempt a pass. Now he's on the move right here. Blocks a guy. Solid. He was able to, you know, contact one guy. But there's another guy also there. So you can't really blame him a whole bunch for that. Now this one, he just manhandles. Just wins the entire rep against that pass rusher. Doesn't allow him to make any moves. Gets his hands inside leverage. Running rep, third and one. Allows, the, you know, the, you know, the running back to get the first down there fairly easily even though he didn't take the best angle another solid look at the look at the way he just cleared that in for the touchdown that touchdown is made sponsored by shane the mew that's a touchdown sponsored by shane the mew right there this one doesn't allow the guy to go inside pushes him into the center and allows justin herbert to run and oh, look at him go and there you go it's kind of impressive by him yeah i didn't i didn't love the intensity what, what kind of 
you know, wimpy push was that? That was that was nothing whatsoever. Let's replay that. You know, like, what, what kind of... That, that, yeah, that's... Come on. Uh, just don't block them whatsoever. Oh, that one just seals off the edge. Allows a third and one to, I think, get to a first down. Yeah, um, that was a solid play by Shane Lemieux. And this one, again, on the move. I trust him to find a defender, connect with him. He has good, solid hips. Doesn't have the best flexibility, I would say. You know, stays patient. Stays patient, ready to punch. Uh, just just solid overall. Doesn't really get bullied and pushed around, which I'm worried that he may do in the NFL. This offensive line was very experienced. Kind of gets beaten around the edge by number 10. It's a little bit of a faster guy. Recovers a little bit well. Keeps his base low and allows a little bit of push for a little bit more time for Justin Herbert. He did get the ball a lot out a lot really quickly. Almost loses that rep again against number 97. But, you know, recovers just good enough. Uh, I don't really love him in pass blocking scenarios, but he does just a good enough job. Number 31, co completely manhandles him to the ground. Some people say that maybe a holding, I guess, or whatever. He, he was hurt after that. I like that physicality right there. Ooh, nice. That's, that's a solid recognition. Be where you're supposed to be and then make plays happen. No excuses. Get some push out of this guy. Come on, Shane Lemieux. Let's go. I like the put. I just want to see a little bit more veracity. I want to see a little bit more like, you know, wrestling guys to the ground. I, I see flashes of it, but I want to see a little bit more of it. Show like you're having fun. I know it's hard to do in a 60 minute football game, but like, come on. I, I, I love I love watching this kid because he shows flashes of being a potentially really good player in this league. And uh, I think that, you know, Kevin Zeidler retires tomorrow. I'd be fairly excited to bring this guy in and see what he has. As far as effort level, not great, but I think you bring like a personality into this offensive line room. He still needs a little bit more experience, but we see he picks up stunts pretty well. Hasn't seen the the most you know different moves and different stunts, I guess. But he played four years in college. And he's able to be physical with guys. He can hold on blocks for long enough. And uh, in, in the run game, he's smart and able to box guys out. And I think that's a valuable tool for the Giants. Has good enough push. I worry about like the extremely big guys. Is he going to be able to work against those guys? I don't really think so. He's not going to be a top guard in this league. I see people compare him to Joe Thune. I don't think that's a real fair comparison for him. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think that you put him at guard and you just see what he got. People want him to play at center. I think it could work because of his athleticism with Daniel Jones and him. I think that's too young just for this year, but I definitely could see him in a center role as he gets more experience in this league. He obviously, again, four years in college, but you know, working to that second level, not not afraid to use his feet. Um, you know, not afraid to use his physicality. Again, I just like to see more of it.